I invite you to go to the Gospel of John. Now, I'm going to set this up and say this is pretty safe to say uh, uh, not a traditional scripture read on the fourth Sunday in Advent. Okay, it, but, but it's okay. It very much connects to um, you know Christmas. And then um, the Passion of the Christ, um, Lent, and what we think of as Good Friday. It connects just in the same way that, that um, years ago, um, <clears throat> and I don't do it every Christmas Eve, but I love, I love to read the story of the prodigal son on Christmas Eve and tell that story. And, and people say, well, that's not a traditional Christmas Eve scripture, right? I know, but it's powerful because of what God has to say, uh, what Jesus said in that, that uh, parable of the extravagant son, the wasteful son, the wasteful father. So here's, here's John. And what's happening is um, this is so shocking of what Jesus is doing um, that, that only John recorded this. They're in the upper room, um, what we think of as like the Seder, the Passover, where Jesus instituted um, you know, the bread and the juice, do this in remembrance of me. But Jesus, in, in John's gospel, John records what Jesus did was utterly shocking. See, in their day, the customs in Jesus' days, people walked like with sandals or maybe no shoes at all. And when they came in, especially for religious rituals, uh, a servant, would wash their feet, would wash their feet. It was meaning to that, okay, part of their rituals. And so, as some of you know this story, when they got into the upper room, um, Jesus began to wash his disciples' feet. And it, it kind of freaked them out, to use our language, okay? I mean, it was like, what? What are you doing? Especially Peter, because he's Peter, right? Peter's like, what, what are you doing? You can't wash my feet. And, and, and Jesus says, look, if I don't wash your feet, you're not cleansed. Okay, now that's figuratively, right? That's figurative. Like, here's what's coming, to be cleansed of your sin. So, of course, Peter and Peter's going, well, don't stop with my feet. Get my head and everything else too, right? Uh, give me a bath. Um, and Jesus said, you're just not getting it, Peter. I'm going to wash your feet. It's about servanthood. That's what this is about. Here's, we'll read this. We'll start in verse 12. When Jesus had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. And he said to them, do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I've set an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. It's about servanthood, servanthood. And so I welcome Wesley. I can see Wesley over there. I'm glad that you've joined us in worship. Here's this word from God in John that is a powerful example of this simple lesson, right? It's a powerful example of what Jesus expects of us. It's an example of what Jesus expects from people who take the name Christian, right? And when I say take the name Christian, that, that's how we identify. We consider ourselves Christians, right? It's, it's an expectation, and I want you to hear that. It's an expectation that, that people first, first receive the service of God through Jesus Christ. Just like Peter was struggling with that, like, no, 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 we, we, we can't do that. I can't do that. I can't receive your service. I can't receive your cleansing. And, God says, no, you have to receive it. You have to receive it. But then you've got to do something. And Jesus said it. He said, do as I have done, meaning serve. You know, we talk about serve, and, and again, that's our perfect gift this week, is giving your service to God by serving other people. I'm going to be very repetitious with that phrase uh, this morning because, again, it's expected. Now, service, service, you know, there's been a lot of really smart, clever things said about service, and here's a few of them, right? Like, if serving is below you, leadership is beyond you. I like that one a lot. You like that one, RJ? Okay. Um, RJ does a lot of leadership stuff, okay? Service to others leads to greatness, and, and on and on. There's some really good things out there. I took, this is like five-minute Google search, right, on, on um Great service quotes, and, and I found some of those. But Jesus kind of was the originator, I think, and certainly for Christians. Jesus set that first standard. And, and to go deeper, what, what Jesus is saying, again, is both wonderful and challenging. He's saying, once you have received the perfect gift of being served, and in this case, cleansed, 
right? The feet washing. He did it literally, but it's figurative. It's, it's like um, pointing to something bigger and deeper. Jesus says, once you've been cleansed by his death, atoning death on the cross so that we can find forgiveness and experience forgiveness of our sins, Jesus says, now you've got to give it. And it may mean you may not wash people's dirty feet, okay, literally, but it's about humility. It's about uh, what some of those Quotes I just put up there. It's about, you know, everything Jesus taught. It's about the first shall be last and the last shall be first. It's about humility and it's about giving um, back more than you take. Amen? Still with me? Okay. That's what he's talking about. <clears throat> put it another way. And this is the challenge part, challenging part. It's the expected response. It's the expected response for those who've been served by God. For those who have been saved by God, for those that have been redeemed by God, for those that have been given hope and joy and love and peace, our Advent candles, all those things. It's the expected response is that you serve God by serving other people, right? And that's, that's, that's the easiest way to do it, right? We talk about that like during our offering. We talk about giving to God through Grandview or through Wesley, through a local church, a, a Christian community. That's how, that's how we do it. That's the practical ways that we do it. And it's the practical ways that we serve God. We're serving God. But the easiest way to do it is to serve other people. And here's the key. You ready for this? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, I know we, we, we uh, are kind of proud of being Iowa nice, Illinois nice, Wisconsin nice, Minnesota nice. Do they say Illinois nice? I don't know. Do they say Illinois? Anybody from Illinois here? That's Wesley over there. Are you guys nice? Okay. Sure, we're Midwesterners. We're nice. I'm not talking about just being nice, okay? Anybody can be nice. I'm talking about serving in the name of Jesus. It's like um, through the years, um, just, just at my time here at Grandview, uh, we have mission work teams that go out. And uh, they go out, and, and, and some of them went, like before I came, they went down after Katrina, went down to New Orleans. There's some people in all three of our uh, Sunday celebrations that were part of those uh, things. We've done work trips. Um, most recently, you know, we went to Corpus Christi. After Harvey, Harvey, we went to Oklahoma, down to Lawton area after tornadoes. Um, went, some, of the, some of our folks went down to Cedar Rapids area after the derecho. So we serve it. Here's the thing. Whenever we've gone to put up drywall or fix a roof or whatever, we're always supposed to be doing it in the name of Jesus. If you agree with that, say yes. Not just because we're nice. And we make sure people know that. We make sure people know that when they say, even like when we go to Domke, Nigeria, right? When we were still, still able to go over there every year, we were clear, crystal clear. We're here because we believe this is what Jesus would have us do. Serve us in his name. That's what I'm talking about. That's how we serve God by serving others. Remember, remember this. It has always been God's intentions that we, the Christian community, we are to be the hands and the eyes and the voice and the heart of the living Jesus working in the world. That's always been God's intentions. That's the gospel, okay? That's what the church is. That's what the Christian community is, is we're supposed to continue doing the work of Jesus. That's what we set as our mission many years ago here at the Grandview United Methodist Church. What are we here to do? What's our mission? We're here to continue the work of Jesus, that's not my uh, idea. That was God's. Now, are you with me on that? Say yes. Good. We like these conversations. This, the sermon's shorter, and we can get to little drummer boy sooner. Are you with me on that? Okay. <laughs> okay. See, Jesus came to serve. It's another place he said it in Matthew. Okay. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. So here's where I'm going with this. What would, what would it look like if this Christmas you stepped up your game? What would it look like this Christmas if you found ways to serve God in new ways or in better ways or in different ways, especially if you aren't already serving God by serving other people? And keep in mind, I'm talking both within the walls of the Christian community, this building here uh, in Dubuque and the building across the river uh, in, in Wesley. Um, down in East Dubuque, um, it, you know, I'm not just talking about serving here. I'm talking about serving other people in the name of Jesus all over. 
Now, I want to say this. I acknowledge that, that I, I'm talking to some people right now and, and some people online that, man, I am so grateful for your service. It's like I said yesterday. I am so grateful that we have people that, that can come in and, and, and work with a bunch of whiny, snotty-nosed kids. You understand what I'm saying? And figure out whether they want to be a chicken or a duck or a donkey or whatever's in the manger, giraffes. Okay, There are people that are patient and loving to do that, and they're serving God by serving our children. If you agree with that, say yes. And I'm grateful for the people that, that work with our youth, our middle school and our high school youth. Kendra Kunkel's come on and helping me teach confirmation. And she's serving. She, she could be home doing something else. She could be hanging out with the grandkids over there with Billy, uh, right? But, but she serves, okay? There are people that come every single Wednesday and pray for you. They pray for you. And they pray for me. They're called prayer shepherds. They meet every single Wednesday during the day. They're serving. There are people that greet. There are people that run cameras and run sound and, and, and run our TV studio up there. These are people I am grateful for because they're serving God by serving other people. Um, you know, uh, I think every week, uh, Jeannie Conley's in here watering plants. Is that every week, Jeannie? Yeah? See, it's a behind-the-scenes service, but she's serving God by uh, uh, serving us, by keeping our plants healthy. So when people walk in here, they don't go, man, these people can't even take care of their plants. They must not be able to even care for me. Do you see the connection? We have people that serve by doing things like mowing the grass and doing landscape and clearing the snow. And they're serving God by serving others and others not yet here in the same way. Um, see, when people are church shopping, right, they, 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 they look at that stuff. So if these people can't even take care of their lawn, if these people can't take care of their sidewalk, if they can't take care of their roof, if they can't take care of keeping the, the, the glass clean, maybe they can't take care of me. Okay? Is that fair? Does that make sense? Say yes. See, people serve here. And I'm saying thank you to the people that serve in so many ways. Right? And I, I want to tell you this, is that I think for the most part, if you ask people, if you ask people um, about their, t their serving, like here at Grandview or over at Wesley, or they're serving out on a mission work trip or doing something, if you ask them about it, I think they would probably tell you that it's very fulfilling. It's very meaningful and it's fulfilling. In other words, they get back probably more than they realize when they make the sacrifices and give the time and the effort and the energy to serve. And I'm saying up at a notch. And instead of serving out of guilt, or instead of serving God by serving others um, out, out of a sense of duty, right? <sighs> Consider serving God as a response to the truth that God has first served you and saved you and offered you hope and a future. That's what I'm pushing on this morning. And so as you're sitting here listening to this, or if you're online listening, or over at Wesley, and if you realize the truth that you aren't engaged in serving God somehow, somewhere, but instead you're mostly being served. I mean, if you're really honest and you think about that and you start kind of taking an inventory and you realize, you realize that, that, that maybe you're kind of looking at your Christian community as a cruise ship. Do you know what I mean? Uh, anybody here ever been on a cruise? I've never been on a cruise. Okay, what you go on a cruise, you like get on a big boat. I get that you get on a big boat, um, and and then you eat too much, drink too much, entertain too much, and you got people serving you. I pretty much sum that up, how that works. That's not us. That's not the church. We're not a cruise ship. So I'm going to say it again. If you're listening to me talking about serving God by serving others, and you realize that really you may not be serving, you're just kind of consuming and being served. What can you do about that? And that's what I want to help you with. All right. First, I want you to understand that it's deeper. In, like I said, it's not guilt. And it's not like, well, we need more Sunday school teachers. I better beat these people over the head with some guilt so they'll step up and do it. That's not what I'm about. What I'm about is this. Doing my part to help save your soul, to have God save your soul. Meaning, doing my part to help you put yourself in situations and, and, and uh, positions for the Holy Spirit of God to form and transform you. The, 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 the really uh, blunt way I've put that is you put yourself in positions and situations where God's Holy Spirit will run you over and change your life, your head, your heart, right? Service is part of the deal, period. Is it serving is part of the discipleship process, okay? It is. It, it, again, it's not just, you need to do this because we need uh, Sunday school teachers. We need ushers and greeters. We need somebody to, to scoop the sidewalk. No, no, no. It, it's to help you. 
It's to help you be in a position so that God's Holy Spirit will form and transform your thinking and your attitudes so that over time, you really do become more like Jesus. Discipleship. That's why this is important, right? And and it goes to that thing of of putting yourself in the position. God really will work. God really will change you. I, I, I use this example. For example, um, years ago when we started going over to Nigeria um, and taking teams over, and there's a, a team, there's, there's Melissa and, and Hannah, and there's Blaine, and there's Matt um, up there. Okay, there's our friend Harry in the red shirt, you know. And so whenever we t- would take teams over to Nigeria, I'd always remind them, like, you know, it would seem like we're the great, you know, white missionaries going over to, uh, you know, to do things and to change them and to teach them. And exactly, it's the exact opposite. You agree with that, Matt? We put ourselves in a position over there. Yeah, we're trying our best to serve God by serving the people of, of Nigeria and, and, and in Jalingo and in um, Domka. But, but the truth is we put ourselves in those positions and then we watch and we observe our Nigerian brothers and sisters and we observe their faith and we observe their practice of Christianity in the midst of a really dirty, hard, difficult, corrupt world, right? And it changes us. Agree with that, Joey? Yeah? Melissa, who else is with Nigerian alumni in here? Okay? It's dark out there. It's an example of what I'm saying. Is that we serve, we serve in the name of Jesus. We make this multi-thousand mile trip over there, some of us, to serve these kids. And, 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 and the, uh, we give what we have. Because you can't give what you don't have, right? So we have money and we have the abilities to jump on Lufthansa Airlines and fly over there. And, and, and we're still serving them in the name of Jesus by sending money over to, to fund this. Like, like in the background, you see that, that, that silver roof thing is not a hay shed or a cattle shading place. That's the school. That's the school for, for a couple hundred Christian and Muslim children to, to go in and learn basics out there in the middle of nowhere, and it is absolutely changing the trajectory of their lives, period, okay? And that's because of you. It's because of us. It's because we take seriously about serving God by serving other people, including the, oops, that's the wrong slide, including, there it is, the least of these. That's what got us over there in the first place, is a whole year of prayer God, where do you want us to go to serve people that if we don't go, nobody's going to serve them. Nobody's going nobody's to serve them, right? And that's the people in Nigeria. Point. We put ourselves in that position and we serve based on what we have because of our relationship with God. That's the expected response is that we do something. And I'm saying you don't have to go to Nigeria. You, you don't have to go thousands of miles away to serve God by serving others. You can do it. You can do it. In fact, you can start in your own home. You know, let me change gears and talk about the practicality and the perfect gift of serving. Start with the people in your home. If you have people in your home, let me tell you some ways that you can begin to serve them. Let me tell you some ways that you can begin to serve them and not just you be served. You can, do, you can do things like be present to them. We talked about this last week, but it's still relevant. You can give the perfect gift of your presence. Put down your phone and listen to them. Be fully present at the table or in the living room or whatever. If you have people in your home, you, you can give the gift of service by being present to them. You can give the gift of prayer. You can pray for and pray with the people in your home, okay, for real. Like if you start with before you eat a meal together, and you should hopefully eat at least one meal together uh, every couple of days. I hope you're experiencing that if you have kids or youth in in your home. Pray, pray. That's how you serve them. And pray for them as well as with them. That's a way to serve. And then, of course, there's witness. That means that you can serve the people in your home. You can serve them by being a positive, powerful witness to what it means to be a Christian. And you can say or you can demonstrate with your actions, this is what Jesus' people do. This is how we act. This is my witness. So you start to serve the people in your home by demonstrating. And then you expand out. You expand out and you can begin to serve say, your extended family, right? Or your neighbors, or the people that you work with, 
or the people that you socialize with, right? Service is a response to God first serving us. And so what am I talking about? Same things. Be present. Be present to that extended family, to your coworkers, to the people you socialize with. If they're in need, listen to them. Help move stuff. Uh, ha- have a meal with them. Take time to be with them. It's a gift of presence to that extended family or your coworkers or the people you socialize with. What about praying for them? Remember that first Sunday in Advent, I said that I believe that an intercessory prayer for someone else Putting someone else's name in front of God is one of the biggest, greatest acts of love that you can give to someone, okay? And so what about that? So you serve these people by praying for them, and you serve these people, again, by when it says witness, don't freak out, okay? It's just simply, um, I've heard so many people um, talk about the witness they give to other people. I'm fortunate, I'm blessed that we have a great Tuesday men's cell group, you know, and, and I always think about Matt Booth's story about when he first started getting active in church and coming to cell group, and he works out with like, guys at the Y or whatever, is that right? And they're like, where are you going, Matt? He's going, oh, I'm just going uh, to, to this meeting, right? And then pretty soon is, well, I can't remember the next steps, but it took him a while to move to that witness phase, right? I'm not throwing Matt under the bus. Okay, he's my friend. It's, it's, he moved to that phase of, yeah, I meet with these group of guys and we talk about scripture and, and we know each other and we pray for each other and all that stuff. That was to his people he socializes with or works out with. I'm saying you can serve God by serving other people, by letting them know, right? By being uh, out that you're a follower of Jesus, not a, not, not, you know, uh, a, um, not a, a sino, a Christian in name only. That's how you can serve other people. Is, is by your witness about your experience with God and your experience with the Christian community. And then it, it goes like this. See, certainly you can be put into a position for God to grow you and God to change you. You can give the perfect gift of service, not just to your household, not just to your extended family, your coworkers and the people you socialize with, but certainly to other people within the walls of Grandview and the walls of Wesley, United Methodist Church in East Dubuque, and other places outside the walls, you can get involved. It's this truth is that it takes all of us. And I'm going to go back to this truth. This truth is, is, is I formed this idea many years ago and shared this with Grandview. We used to run around with T-shirts on that said uh, 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 hospital ship crew. Remember some of those? said crew. Why? Because I believe that God's design of the church is to be a hospital ship. And I'll say it again, not a cruise ship. If you agree with that, say amen. Amen. Not a cruise ship where some people or a lot of people are served and and, and 10 or 20% do all the serving and burn out and get tired. A hospital ship. See, a hospital ship is mobile. A hospital ship is on the move. And what specifically, this is a hospital ship mercy, okay? There's another hospital ship called Comfort. I didn't want to put Comfort up there because I didn't want anybody to be too comfortable today. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Mercy. Mercy. It's hospital ship Mercy. What's it designed to? Well, it goes to where the hurting is. We've always said that. It responds to where people are broken and burned and bruised and beat up. And so my vision many years ago, and it it still persists is that God's design for us, the Christian community, is to be on the move and to be active and to still respond daily, weekly, to those who are hurt and burned and broken by the world, right? It's that truth that we've said all during Advent, never forget there are people all around you who need God. There are people all around you who need God and need the Christian community. The hospital ship, see, for the hospital ship to function, it takes everybody. It takes everybody in different roles that have different abilities and different knowledges and and, and different talents, right? So some people on the hospital ship drive the ship, some maintain the ship, some cook, some do laundry, some clean, some are doctors, some are nurses, nurses, right? And here's the other truth about the hospital ship and our, our Christian communities as a hospital ship is that sometimes the crew members of the hospital ship get burned and broken and beat up by the world. And guess what? They're in the perfect place. To use the language of our Stephen ministry, sometimes you see in our hospital ship, sometimes you, you, you need to be a caregiver and sometimes you need to be a care receiver. That's how God designed us. But again, it takes everybody. 
not just a few. It takes everybody. In this church, I'm telling you, there are always opportunities to serve. Same with Wesley and Center Grove, other campuses. There are always opportunities. If you feel like, I don't know, where can I serve? We have so many opportunities. Jan, in the back, you're going to be gone for a month down in Arizona in the desert. Why would anybody? Anyway, anyway, okay. Jan, Jan does our name tags every week. She puts the name tags back in order. Somebody needs to step up in January and, and help Jan out. See, that's what I mean. There's always ways to serve God at Grandview and help our hospital ship function. It's, it's the truth. It's a perfect gift that God first gave to us. And we've been saved and cleansed by Jesus. We've been served. And now it's time for us to serve. You know, I've always been optimistic, but I have to admit, I've always been naive. I've always been naive. I've always thought in this, maybe it's just preacher math, preacher equation, that it would seem like if you've got a, a church, a Christian community, and you've got a lot of people who are really, you know, excited and grateful, maybe in loud ways, maybe in quiet ways, but they're grateful for how God has served them. I always thought if you have a church and, and you have people, uh, adults, that are really, you know, um, in, all in, not just go through the motions, but they're grateful for the salvations God has given them. To me, it's always seemed like, well, we should never, ever have to push hard to get Sunday school teachers or vacation Bible school teachers. We should never have to push hard and we won't ever beg, but we should never have to constantly ask and ask and ask for people to be ushers and to be greeters and to serve cookies and to serve coffee and to, to do all the different acts of service. We should never, in my naive mind, have to push hard and twist tails to get people to serve God by serving others if they've first been grateful and acknowledged the way God has served them. So that's our challenge, all of us, this Christmas. How can you step up? How can you step up and serve God by serving other people? Not just in your own home, not just extended family, here and outside these walls. May God help us. May God help us with that. Let me pray about that. Lord God, you do know us. And I pray you forgive us for the times that we just would rather consume and we'd rather have people do things for us. And sometimes we even complain about it. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to do better, all of us. I pray, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for those people, your people, both in these church buildings and outside these church buildings. I pray for the people that need you. I pray for the people that need positive, meaningful, hospital ship Christian community. And I pray, Lord, that you continue to grow us and energize us to be the people that you will use, that you will use to help and to bring healing to those that are burned and broken and bruised. Lord, I pray that this Christmas and in the new year, I pray that you raise us all up in new ways by the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray this in the name of Jesus. I pray it for all of us. And all of us pray out loud in one voice the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.